Hey, what's up guys? It's Lawrence. Thanks for stopping by my channel. If you like what you see, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Observing obscure observances, looking at the calendar for April 20th. Here we go. We got Chinese Language Day, and it reads as follows. <clears throat> Chinese is one of the six official languages of the United Nations. In February 2010, the United Nations created six language days to celebrate multi multilingual multilingualism and cultural diversity as well as to promote equal use of all six official languages throughout the organization. The days were also created to increase awareness and respect for the history, culture, and achievements of each of the six working languages among the UN community. The creation of the days was part of the 2010 International Mother Language Day. Besides Chinese, there are days that honor the Russian language, English, Arabic, French, and Spanish languages. Events are held at the UN headquarters each year. Common events have included a grand opening ceremony, film screenings, lectures, panel discussions, workshops for writing Chinese calligraphy, a martial arts demonstration, and performances of traditional music and folk dancing. After being celebrated on November 12th during its first year, Chinese Language Day began being celebrated on April 20th in 2011. In the traditional East Asian calendar, the year is divided into 24 solar terms. The sixth solar term is Gayu, which begins around April 20th in the Gregorian calendar. Gayu, which is translated to Reign of Millet, celebrates Kangchi. According to legend, Kangchi was the inventor of the event of Chinese languages. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Kangchi, according to language, he was the inventor of Chinese characters, and ghosts and deities rained millet from the sky when he invented them. The connection of the date to Chinese characters is why it was chosen for the holiday. Chinese is one of the world's oldest languages, with archaeological records dating back to over 4,000 years. Over a billion people speak it. There are 2,000 dialects, but Mandarin is the most prevalent, with over 95% of the Chinese population being able to understand it. Chinese became an official language of the United Nations in 1946, but it was not commonly used by the United Nations at that time. This began to change after 1971 with the restoration of the law for rights of the People Republic with the People's Republic of China. Following this, the General Assembly included the language as a... Uh, let's see, following this, the General Assembly included the language as a working language in 1973, and the Security Council did so the following year. And there it is. Interesting little thing about the Chinese language. I don't speak it, and I imagine having to write it in Braille has got to be really taxing. Well, I think writing any language in Braille has got to be pretty taxing. Hmm. <sighs> Because you got to use a whole bunch of characters. You use a whole bunch of different dots to explain this means this this symbol in this language. Lima bean respect day. Okay. I don't eat lima beans. All I can think of is that one scene on The Simpsons where Bart is babysitting. No, Lisa's babysitting Bart. And he keeps asking her for lima beans. And she says, don't you want to eat him? He says, no, I just like looking at them because they're gross. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> what's your favorite vegetable? Is it the lima bean? Chances are it's not. Lima beans always seem to be one of the least eaten and respected vegetables. And today exists to give them the respect they deserve. Okay. Lima beans, which are named after Lima, Peru, are green and flat with a kidney-shaped curve. They've been cultivated since about 6,000 BCE and were being grown in North America long before Europeans arrived. There are two types, baby lima and fort hook. As the name suggests, baby limas are smaller than fort hook varieties. Bought fresh, often in pods, or canned or dried, lima beans offer a good supply of protein, potassium, phosphorus, and iron. They are usually cooked and are often served boiled and buttered as a side dish. They may also be used to make soups and salad. Lima beans are the main ingredient in succotash, which also includes corn and often peppers. This dish is popular in the American South, where lima beans are also known as buttered beans. I didn't know that. Buttered beans, y'all. We need some more buttered beans. And that's all for that. <clears throat> all on that one. All right. 
What else are we sitting at here? Okay. Lima beans. Ugh, no thank you. None for me. I'm good. All right, here we go. National Cheddar Fries Day. Mmm. Kind of, <coughs> kind of fitting because today is 420. Just saying. Okay, here we go. National Lookalike. <coughs> National Lookalike Day. <laughs> Was that for the doppelgangers out there? I wonder what that must be like on, on sets of soap operas. Hey, wait, where's the doppelganger? <laughs> I wonder how many times you hear that one on a set of like, Days of Our Lives, or All My Children, or One Life to Live, or I don't know what uh, what the other soap opera programs are. Anybody out there in the comment section know of any other soap opera shows? Uh, let's see. Okay. Darn it. Jumps around here. National, well, National Pineapple Upside Down Cake Day. I'm not into pineapples. It's just, I don't know, something about the taste of them. I don't know. Patriots Day. It would be observed the third Monday of April, but not this year because of the whole coronavirus. But still, Patriots Day, that's in Boston where they have the Boston Marathon. And they got all these great events. Everyone takes the day off. Well, let's find out what this is all about. Patriots Day. Patriots Day for the Pats. All right, here we go. <laughs> Patriots Day is a holiday commemorating the Battles of Lexington and Concord, which took place on April 19, 1775. The shots fired at these two cities on the outskirts of Boston were the first shots of the American Revolution. Following the war, Lexington Day and Concord Day began being celebrated in their respective cities. The cities later petitioned Massachusetts Governor Frederick Greenhouse to create a state commemoration. He created Patriots Day, which replaced Fast Day... It was first celebrated on April 19, 1894. The new holiday also originated, originally commemorated the... Uh, let's see, it was first celebrated on April 19, 1894. The new holiday also originally commemorated the anniversary of the Baltimore Riot of 1861, where some of the first bloodshed of the Civil War took place, and four members of the Massachusetts militia, militia died. In 1938, the Massachusetts legislator passed a bill making the battles of Lexington and Concord the, sor the sole focus of the day. Until 1969, the holiday was celebrated on the actual anniversary of the battles, but it has since has been observed on the third Monday of April in most states that officially commemorate it. As of 2018, it is a state holiday in Maine and Massachusetts. Schools in Wisconsin observe it on April 19th if it's a weekday by having students learn about the battles at their, in their importance to American history. Those in Florida are encouraged to celebrate the day, although it isn't an official holiday there. Connecticut officially began observing it in 2018. Reenactments, let's see, reenactments of the battles are held at Lexington Green in Lexington and at the Old North Bridge at Concord. Paul Revere, who is known for his midnight ride, on the night before the battle is celebrated on the day. In fact, reenactments of his ride, as well as that of William Dawes, are held. Lectures and con concerts are also held, and the Boston Marathon is part of the celebration. Uh, but the last time we all heard about the Boston Marathon in a big way was unfortunately in a tragic way when three people were killed and multiple people were injured because those two guys, they set up the pipe bomb and the pressure cooker right near the finish line, near the start line. And for some reason, some people found one of the bombers to be attractive. Anyway... Here nor there. <clears throat> volunteer Recognition Day. There's no information on that, but if you do volunteer somewhere, or if you know somewhere who volunteers somewhere, you know, uh, 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 let me amend that. Uh, let me amend that. If you know somebody who volunteers, give them the respect they deserve today. And that is all with that. There's no information here about uh, National uh, 420 Day, but all right, well. No, yeah, I guess it's not for everybody. All right, one more thing. Thank you to Timothy Schultz for liking the blind guy on YouTube Facebook page. Anyway, I'm Lawrence Ross, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, it's Lawrence. Well, that's the end of the video, but before I go, I want to thank you guys for checking out the content. If you'd like, you can check out my radio show every Friday evening at 7 p.m., 
on RazRadioLive.com. That's R-A-S RadioLive.com. RadioChaos.net. And in this case, it's Chaos with a K. K-A-O-S. RadioChaos.net. Or NoNameNetwork.net. It's called the LRWS. And check it out. We also have a store. Teespring.com. T-E-E. Spring.com forward slash stores, forward slash LRWS. And if you want, you can check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash LRoss1987. Thanks for watching.